Table Talk with Sid. Hey, uh, this is a life memo, and this discussion today is based on how do you, how do you find the good when someone dies or passes on before their time, or when it happens through negligence of others, and how do you uh, find that forgiveness and hope and the stuff that really matters, you know. So I'm actually going through this as we speak. Yesterday, my father passed away, and it was it was not planned. It was, um, you know, it's really taken me a, a minute to step back and determine how I'm going to look at this, deal with this, uh, problem solve this. And, and what I am learning in this that, um, absolutely we all have, we all have opportunity, which I think is beautiful to choose how we're going to deal with things, how we're going to look at them and how we're going to either allow them to take us down or build us up. And, you know, in this situation with him, it was a lot of medical malpractice. And so it's really made me quite angry. Yet, I think to myself, you know, I, I really want to find a way to, to cherish him, to really remember the good about him, and to have this... Um, this beautiful regard for what he gave to this world. And you know, it is amazing because as I push forward and find my balance and I'm out in the world and I'm listening to all of the murmurings and the the chatter on, you know, people's woes, it, it really has really made me aware that a lot of the things that we complain about are so minimal. And uh, because I'm one of those people that I really, you're not going to know if anything's wrong because I'm very private. I like to keep my issues, my my family to myself. And so I'm not out plastering at all over social media and I'm not emotional out in public. But you know, that was that was an awakening. So it's something that I've really been taking a moment to figure out because as I'm out in the world, you know, the world just is moving on as if my dad didn't really ever matter to anyone, but he was such a brilliant man. And so I'm going to tell you a couple things of what makes him so brilliant, because I think that's empowering for those out there that may be going through something similar. It's remembering what makes them and what made them so valuable and unique and important. And this person that nobody can duplicate, you know, he coached me in soccer all those years growing up. And, uh, he was just a riot. So we would all be traveling in our vans. And, you know, back in those days, there wasn't a lot of air conditioning going on in the car. And so the windows are down. And my dad's assistant coach happened to be my girlfriend's father, who was an attorney. So that tells you a lot about his personality. And uh, and this was a consistent thing. This happened all the time. We had we were driving along and my dad's in front of us in in the van in front and I'm in the back sitting in the passenger seat with George who was the assistant coach who's driving all of a sudden you see the blinker in the car of my dad's go on and George gets these white knuckles and he he begins to sweat and he goes what what again well we had to pull over consistently we would have to do this this time we had to pull over so that my dad would he would come back and he'd open the you know the van door and there's all these teeny boppers sitting in there and you know we're rolling our eyes he's like no no get out of the car you need to come look at this now my dad was a concrete guy, you know, so there was this uh, concrete tree that was built and put on the side of the road. So we had to get out and look at the concrete tree. He had to explain to us why and how the concrete was formed and why it was working in some areas and why it didn't work in the others. He was just always this guy that was giving these life lessons. You know, my girls, when they were younger, I remember them telling me, you know, mom, every time we go to 
to Papa's house, we have to forage for food. And I looked at him, I go, you have to forage for food? What do you mean? Well, my dad was this gardener. His his garden was amazing. I had no idea that the girls went over, and when they got hungry, they had to forage for food. But the brilliant thing was, is that he would have this table set up, and he would put the different leaves of the different plants on this table. Then he would write down the scientific name, and he would write down the everyday name, and then he would have an object next to that plant on how we used it in everyday life. And so here are my children wandering around, as dirty as can be from head to toe, but wandering around, loving their childhood, loving foraging for food, loving the fact that they were learning about different plants and how we used them. And so every single thing that my dad did in his life was about educating you without knowing you're being educated. It was very, very brilliant. You know, he would, um, in fact, this was quite recent uh, when I had taken the girls to uh, chloride, and it's as horrible a place as it sounds. There's like a hundred people there. It's all dirt roads, and it's an old mining town. He loves living there. I mean, really, if you want to go do drugs or something and hide out, this is the place to go. So he loves living there, and uh, we get there one day, and he says, hey, he calls me DJ. Come on out, DJ. Look at this. And so he, he, you know, he turns off all the lights, and it's pitch black. And he starts looking up in the sky and he's explaining to me how the stars work, how the planets work and all the things that I'm looking at. He then says, look down at the ground. No, he turns on this flashlight. He has this stick and he starts explaining by drawing in the sand how everything rotates and how it works and how much time it takes. But that thing of sea feel, experience, and do was always how my dad taught life. It's how he raised us. Another example was that he, uh, I, uh, one time I began, you know, in, I guess, high school, I began driving. And, you know, most people are telling you what you can't do. And if you do this, you're going to get this. Not my dad. He was brilliant. He, one day he motions to me, he's silent. He puts me in the car and, uh, we take a little drive to the corner street. We get out and all of a sudden I find myself, we're walking, we're walking silently to the bus stop find ourselves at the bus stop. All of a sudden I see the bus pull up and he says, hold out your hand. He clinks in some change into my hand. We walk on the bus. He goes, put it in the bus. So I put it in and we're driving again. It's silent. And all of a sudden I find myself in front of my high school. We get off the bus and he says, do you see where you are? And I said, yes. And he said, I just want to make this very clear to you. You're going to begin to drive. If you get a ticket, slough school, if you put children in the car without permission, if you wreck my car or speed around being unresponsible, he said, I just wanted to make you aware that this will be your form of transportation. He says, now everybody's going to see you get off the bus and they're going to see you get on the bus. You're going to have to go quite early in the morning to sit on the bench to wait for the bus. He said, so I just wanted to give you a first hand look at the experience you will experience if you're not responsible with driving. Well, we get home and we walk in the house and what's laying out on the table, he said, I also just wanted you to be aware, this is how much insurance costs. That will also be your responsibility. I will tell you this, never, up until the age of 40, did I ever get a ticket. I have never been in a wreck now. I love to drive. I love to double clutch. I love speed, but never did I get a speeding ticket or get in a wreck or put children in the car. And I'll tell you, my butt was always at school. His way of educating life and getting you to understand how life works and helping you to make choices because you choose to make choices was fabulous. He would never say, no, you can't do it. He would always say, well, here's the pros and the cons, and here are the things that you are responsible for in the good and the bad. 
You need to make sure you can handle both. So in this discussion, what I'm really hoping those that are experiencing experiencing this loss with me, this loss of somebody leaving your life too soon, this loss of somebody being taken from you when there was no need for them to be taken, but how to find the brilliance in it, how to find the peace in it, the joy that this person brought to your life and the gratitude for being a part of their life and having them in your life and knowing that that was definitely not an accident. And the gratitude I have for that amount of time of being with him, though I am angry, I want to celebrate him and to let the world know that they're missing a brilliant man. And then through my actions and behaviors, I, I want to serve him and I want to cherish him and I want to share the world uh, with him and him with them. And so I do hope in your day you will fall down, stand up, brush off and move on. Talk to you.